Now y'all know I love me some lists But I was shocked when I looked at this one Because I stopped reading it really after the first two And what this list is Is the top 10 safeties in the NFL You already know where we're going with this You already know who we're getting ready to talk about I mean he's in a thumbnail anyway But <clears throat> Super Duper Kyle He is arguably Arguably Best safety in the NFL Best safety in the NFL I mean you could argue that They got Antoine Winfield Jr. At number one Fresh off his new contract too And I ain't mad at that Because he got the numbers he, he, he can ball himself But Kyle Hamilton They got him listed at number two So you could flip flop that You could debate it You could argue it Whatever But the fact that Kyle Hamilton After his second year He's regarded as a top safety in the league Love it Love it And y'all know When we talk about Kyle Hamilton We give him nothing but his praises Because he is amazing He just He gets it He makes plays He can do everything And he can do everything At a very very high level We love Kyle Hamilton Wish the Ravens could pay him now But just think about that too Like It's That price is gonna go crazy man He keep. Even, like, think about this. Think, just how crazy Kyle Hamilton is. Even if, now, of course he is going to, but even if from this point on he didn't get any better than he was right now, he would still be amazing. If he just stayed at the same level that he is right now, didn't get any better, didn't, didn't improve at all, he would still be one of the best, if not the best safety in the league. So now he's going into his third year. He'll have that much more experience. He'll have that much more knowledge of the game. So with that being said, he can be even better. He can take it to a whole nother level. So Kyle Hamilton, we're super excited for him in his third year. Just this whole defense overall, especially under new defensive coordinator, Zach Orr. We're going to see exactly how he operates. But let's, that's not even the shocking part about this list. Let, let's get to it. So number three, Jesse Bates the third, former Cincinnati Bengals. Oh, I was loving when he was having his fallout with the Bengals. When he was he showed up to their preseason game and he said, put it on the little social media and whatnot. Uh, but then he signed his, his his franchise tag. But then they didn't re up on him. They had ended up drafting uh Dax Hill through they drafted Justice Hill brother. They drafted Dax Hill and that was the beginning of the end for Jesse Bates because you know when they draft somebody at your position, then it's probably the end for you. Like hey Chuck Clark, Ravens drafted Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, you know how that goes and how that went. But anyway, Jesse Bates is the number the number three safety in the league. Number four. Minka Fitzpatrick from the Pittsburgh Steelers. All right, cool. But number five. Number five is where this conversation, like, I was surprised. Oh, okay. I ain't mad. I ain't mad. But number five, Marcus Williams of the Baltimore Ravens. That's beautiful. That's, that's, that's so lovely because having t one of the best safeties in the league is good enough for me. That's good enough for me. I mean, I would love to, but having one is good enough. And I think that's really good enough for any team. But having arguably two of the top 10 safeties in, not in the AFC North, not even just in the AFC, but having two of the top 10 safeties in the NFL, that says a lot. That says a lot. Now, with Marcus Williams, I know us as Ravens fans, we are extra critical of every single player that plays for our favorite football team because we watch every single play, we watch every single game, we watch every single snap. So we see these players. And some of y'all take a deep dive in the film, so y'all watch it even more. So with Marcus Williams, when you watch him at times last year, when you watch him at times the previous year, you can think, ooh, top 10 safety. And you may question it initially when you think about a hurt Marcus Williams when you think about an injured Marcus Williams when you think about Marcus Williams with one arm but then you think hold up but when he was healthy oh yeah that boy is nice ah yeah that boy can play oh Marcus Williams that's a baller so I get it I, initially I was shocked but then I thought hold up healthy Marcus Williams is like that he really is. Now, the goal, of course, is for him to be healthy throughout the entire season. That has not happened with him as a Baltimore Raven as of yet. But hopefully, the third time in the third year is the charm. Charm City. Anyway, uh, number six, Javon Holland. I really like Javon Holland a lot. I was first put on to him when the Miami Dolphins beat down uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, a couple years ago, the game in Miami, the Thursday night game, and we all went to that game. Um, that was the, the, the zero blitz game. That was the game where everybody learned what a zero blitz is. That was that one. 
But that's why I got, first got put on a Javon Holland because he just like Kyle Hamilton, they were using him everywhere. He was doing a bit of everything. And I was like, who is this guy, number eight? Wow, that dude's a ball. Oh, that's Javon Holland. Oh, okay. He could play. He really can. Um, next up, somebody else who, when healthy, they could play, Derwin James. Derwin James. I haven't really heard too much about him over the past couple of years. I feel like I haven't, but maybe it's just me. But Derwin James. Um, then at number eight, Xavier McKinney. I think he used to be on the Giants. I guess the Packers signed him this offseason. Then number nine, Kyle Duggar from the Patriots, who just got, he just got a contract extension, I believe. And then closing out at number 10 is the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. I remember um, a couple years ago, like, was thinking, hey, Ravens, you could bring on the Honey Badger. A lot of us was thinking that he may come through. You know, like, Ravens and the Saints, uh, like, Baltimore New Orleans got this, like, connection, man. Especially in the NFL, they got this connection where they be, like, they be giving players back and forth. And those players go on to do good things for each team. Like, look at Ben Grubbs, who was our... Uh, I want to say was he a left guard or right guard. I want to say left guard, but I don't remember for sure. He's a guard for the Ravens, though. He went on a sign with the Saints. He did this thing over there. Paul Kruger. Paul Kruger, who was Baltimore Ravens outside linebacker slash defensive end. He went to the Saints. Nah, it didn't go so well over there. And I think that was his last stop. But he went to the Saints. Um, Willie Sneed. Willie Sneed obviously started with the Saints, did his thing over there, but then came to the Baltimore Ravens and was a nice part of what the Baltimore Ravens did uh, and now recently Marcus Williams but then you go back a couple years Mark Ingram Mark Ingram they loved him in New Orleans but then he came to Baltimore and we loved them over here and then New Orleans loved them in Baltimore and it's like oh it's just it's just a love connection between Baltimore and New Orleans it's special man and it's been special for a long time and we can name more players too but you get the point um but with Marcus Williams I just um He's, he's, he's a special guy, man. Ravens made a good decision with signing him. I remember when they first did sign him, um, I, was, I was hyped about it. I was excited about it because it showed me like, all right, Ravens are doing some things different and they are committing to a young player entering his prime at the safety position. So they tried some different safeties back there. Obviously, Earl Thomas. And Earl Thomas was not bad when he played for the Ravens. He was not bad at all. I, I hate when I hear people say, oh, Earl Thomas, he sucked. He was so bad. And No, he wasn't. Don't let that one Derrick Henry stiff arm saw around the world. Don't let that stiff arm that Earl Thomas got from Derrick Henry fool you. Earl Thomas was not a bad player for the Baltimore Ravens at all. He was really good. Now, they did say he used to do his own thing. But hey, he, he didn't did his own thing. And they said he, he was going rogue out there sometimes on the field. Hey, so he might not have been the best teammate, but he was a really good player. So, anyway. Um, but, yeah, a lot of times we've seen with the Baltimore Ravens at the safety position – uh, they because again, Ed Reed spoiled them so much. He he spoiled the Baltimore Ravens bad, and he made it so tough for any safety that the Baltimore Ravens would get. Like we saw Eric Weddle, Eric Weddle, he, he did his thing, but that age caught up to him quick. And then Tony Jefferson, he was solid, but uh, Eric Weddle, he, he he was nice man, um, very very smart, putting getting guys lined up and everything. Remember Eric Weddle, he did his thing, um, but he's a little older. So just seeing them going in the direction of a Marcus Williams was like ah. Okay, nice. And hopefully we can watch both him and Kyle Hamilton continue to go in the direction that they've been going, and that's only up from here.